Jason, if you would, go ahead and present, if you don't mind, uh, case number TWR 2016-01, Baker Thompson, please. Yes, sir. This particular request uh, is not one that we see very often, but ultimately what they're asking for is the ability to construct a new telecommunications tower on the subject property. With that, um, the various background that we went over in the work session, ultimately the current proposal that they have is for a maximum height of a 100-foot tower. That's basically a 95-foot tower with a 5-foot antenna structure. Um, we've had some conversations about this tower, honestly, since about April of this year. That's where we had a meeting officially with them. Um, their original proposal was for 160 feet, but they backed down to 100 feet after communications with Moody Air Force Base. I know that the Commission had some questions to follow up on from the work session, so I did prepare uh, a slide to show you. In this slide, the subject property is right below those crosses in the very lower center of your screen. The runways to Moody are to the east, and the range runways we discussed are to the west. So you can see this property, I think, probably on purpose, tries to split both of those runway areas we're almost right in the middle. So I wanted to show you an arrow that kind of shows the subject property is and its location to both of those uh, runway areas. In addition to that, um, this map's a little busy, but again, the subject property is right in the middle of the screen on the corner of Lakeland and Old State. And the depictions you see on the screen are actually towers, their existing tower infrastructure. I'm gonna do this again, but I'm gonna take off the roads and you can see right where the subject property is, there's a very large gap. And so with that, I think that's predominantly why we have the applicants here, is to try to fill that gap with some kind of tower coverage along that traveled Lakeland Highway. Um, so I have those maps just to follow up on the work session. But ultimately, um, in addition, I know the commission wanted something in writing. We did get something, and Andy has a copy this afternoon from our contact in Virginia. I've had continued verbal communications with our local representatives. I was a little concerned because I reached out to two of them last week, didn't hear from them. It turns out they were all out of town. So I heard from them today, heard from two separate individuals about a verbal okay, but the only thing I have in writing, which is, an e is, is really a building on the email from Representative Virginia that Andy's going to pass out in just a minute, um, we're able to get it from that same gentleman, Mr. Nelson. So I still have verbal. Um, verbal okays from our local constituency here at Moody, but something in writing, a little more official on letterhead that you'll see in just a minute, because I'm just seeing it. I saw it in the last half an hour. Um, I'm trying to think any other updates. Uh, I did um, get uh, notice from Mr. Rottenstrike and his team about you know, potential actions if the case is denied. That's typically a procedural thing, it sounds like, for them, where if something does happen, they kind of put us on notice that they're very serious about this intent. Beyond that, um, the only movement I have heard based on the work session and the discussion is whether or not to require or ask for some lighting on these towers. Uh, I don't believe that they have to provide any lighting under 160 feet according to FAA regulations. I've heard some feedback from Moody saying if they did provide lighting, they just didn't want it to be a white light because it interferes with their night vision activities. So honestly, between you know now and the County Commission meeting, I want to follow up with Moody again to make sure is lighting something we need to address. Because our ordinance says if the FAA doesn't require it, then we don't want you to have it on there. But if it will be helpful to Moody, then I think that's something we need, to, we need to consider. So that to me is the only unknown question I bring to you. I think Mr. Rob Strike's team is prepared to address the lighting issue. I just don't want to address it until I've heard from them 100% what they're asking for and will be helpful. I don't want to do something that's counterproductive out there to their operations. So that's the only issue I have not been able to tie down. Everything else is on the table and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, the only special addition we have to our team is Ms. Jennifer is with Mr. Rob Strike's team and she's a court reporter. So something a little more formal than we're used to, but that's why we have an extra guest on Ms. Carmel. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for staff on this request? I, 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 just is that uh, is the lighting that verbiage you said about the FAA is that is that verbiage located in our packet where anything less than 100 feet that it require or is 100 feet or less or it is in our ULDC. Okay. Um, 
and Mr. Rockstrike has brought it up just to say we don't mind being helpful. We understand it's a sensitive area, but the only official feedback I've been able to get from Moody, literally as of the meeting, was their helicopter pilots requested not be a white light. I just want to make sure that if they install a red light, which is something you typically might see on towers, that that's something that will be helpful to them. So far, they have not committed to say we need we need lights on this tower. That's why I'm hesitant to put forward with some kind of condition of approval that relates to that. So with that, that's the only place I thought there's still some movement in this discussion. And one other thing you said, you said that you have <coughs> probably been working with us since the 1st of April. Yes, sir. Our official, um, we had a pre-app meeting that included moving, that included Mr. Rothstrike's team um, back in April. And that's when they initially presented their case for 160 feet. We recommended, we knew we had some concerns, we got them in touch with their civil engineering squadron and they worked through those concerns to the point of dropping it down to 100 feet. I think Mr. Rockstrike's going to go into those details, but between April and when they submitted this request, those were the negotiations that dropped in height. And so I've, and I've got confirmation from Moody on that as well to say, yes, we were not okay with 160, we are okay with 100, and, and we have that in writing, you know, a little more officially than an email tonight from that Virginia. And so in this power location, it's not fall within MAZ, but it does border. Yes, sir, that's right. It is, if you look on that zoning map, it is it is right to the south of the MAZ. And for our formal communications with our last update, we built in something called a letter of clearance, where if you're within the airport overlay or you're within the MAZ, we're required to get a letter of clearance for Moody. If it's outside of that, we have a choice whether or not to ask for that. Um, my opinion in handling this case, I did not officially initiate that procedure because I was happy with the communications between the applicant and the movie. So I did not officially initiate that. But you know, we can, if you really believe that's ultimately necessary, it costs us some time, um, which I don't think the Verizon team is in favor of, but ultimately, because I really believe they were communicating well and we got good results and a compromise that they said they're okay with, we did not initiate this formal letter of clearance. So the MAZ VOD overlay, yes, but it's outside of that. We have the choice about whether or not to initiate that. So do you anticipate, if lighting is a concern, do you anticipate us, it being better for us to um, move this forward with a condition as a placeholder or wait for the county commission to add that in? A placeholder, in my opinion, will be fine because it would just almost be if Moody determines that lighting is necessary, that lighting will be installed. I don't think there's a problem with that. I don't think the applicants would have a problem providing lighting. I just don't feel like I have enough evidence to feel like, sir, they need lighting. And I just have not heard from them in that capacity, and that's my hesitation. Any other questions for staff on this request? Commissioners, any other questions? There being none, if anyone here tonight is wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Good evening, sir. Can you mind state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, good evening. My name is Andy Ruckman Strike. I'm here on behalf of uh, Verizon Wireless and Foresight Towers. I'm on, I think Carmel knows how to spell it, but just in case. <laughs> she thanks you. Uh, um, the uh, property owner for this property is uh, Ben Weatherington and Mary Ann Rabbit. I understand. Uh, ben goes by Buzzy's weapon. Uh, this is a 225 plus acre piece of property that uh, we're looking at. Most of it's wooded. And it's at the intersection of Lakeland Highway and uh, Old State Road. The property is zoned EA, and under your ordinance, towers are permitted subject to supplemental standards. And the supplemental standards in your ordinance are the telecommunications provision uh, therein. Uh, as Jason said, we are proposing a 95-foot monopole, which is a term we use in the industry. So it's just going to be the straight pole design, similar to a power pole. Matter of fact, they're made by the same folks, just a little taller. Uh, it's not going to be a big guide wire tower with guide wires coming off. It's not going to be a big three-legged uh, lattice tower like we have downtown here. It's just a single pole design. Uh, so the 95-foot pole, it will have a 5-foot lightning rod on the top. And, of course, we ground that to the ground, subject to building code standards to make sure that, you know, anything when lightning hits it, that it disperses in the ground on the compound itself. 
Um, as Jason alluded to, uh, Verizon Wireless is in desperate need of coverage in this area. Um, this has really started back, I think Jason and I were talking back two or three years ago. Uh, Verizon first wanted to come in and build a 280-foot tower. That was the coverage they really wanted to try and get. And actually, we withdrew that application knowing that we needed to deal with Moody and they weren't going to go for that. So Verizon went back to the drawing board and we've come forward with this proposal. At first, 160 feet was trying to get the most coverage we could from one single pole. And then um, once we uh, got together with Jason and we reached out and had discussions with Moody, Moody asked us to drop it down to 100 feet total. <coughs> we went back to Verizon. Verizon said, well, that's all we can get. That's what we'll do because we really need coverage out there. Uh, the first thing we do when a carrier like Verizon needs better coverage is we look to co-locate on existing towers. Uh, much quicker, easier, and cheaper for Verizon Wireless. We don't need to come before you and ask for a new poll. As Jason showed you in the, uh, the diagram four, uh, there just wasn't a tower or even a tall structure uh, that we could use that would give Verizon the need to cover. So our only alternative was to come to you and ask for a new poll, which is what we're here doing tonight. Um, you guys do have the uh, ULDC code. Um, we meet the uh, provisions under your telecommunications section uh, with regard to lighting. Your code says that we are only supposed to light towers where the FAA requires us to light. Uh, there's been some discussion that Jason mentioned about Moody possibly wanting us to light it. The verbal indication we got from Moody was what Jason said earlier, which was if you're going to light it, don't use white lights because that'll hurt with their night vision. As the applicant, we will either light it or not light it. Uh, typically, we don't light unless the FAA requires us to. Most of the neighbors in the area uh, prefer not to have the lights on top. But again, if you guys or Moody needs us to, we will be happy to. But our plan is not to light it currently. Um, this tower will be built strong enough to accommodate additional carriers. So when Verizon's competitors uh, decide they need to start providing coverage in this area, they can simply locate on this pole and won't need to come before you and ask for a new pole. Uh, the security of the site, uh, which is required under the ordinance, will have a fenced-in compound that will be padlocked. Uh, also, we'll have anti-climbing devices on the pole, so you won't be able to get to the rungs on the pole to climb up unless you have some really tall ladder. Uh, there are setbacks for towers uh, under your uh, code, which are one-third of the height of the tower. So our proposed height uh, is 95 feet, but if we take it to 100, we need to be set back 33 and a third feet from all the property lines, which we are. Um, again, FAA allowed us to go to 160 feet. We're going underneath that. And then um, I would like to show you, if I could, just to have for your records, uh, a couple of things. Number one, there was some discussion before about some more official um, response from the Air Force regarding the site. And then I'd also like to show you a couple of things with regard to our uh, proposed coverage. So if I could hand it out to you. I don't know if I have enough, so if I might share. This is the letter that Jason uh, held up just a, moment, a few moments ago. Uh, I had been talking with the uh, Air Department of the Air Force in Virginia about getting something more formal in writing. Um, and uh, Mr. Nelson, who's the act acting deputy chief for airspace, uh, sent us this letter. Uh, and one thing, I think Mr. Folsom, I think you brought up a good question at the work session, which was that it didn't uh, impact current operations, but would it impact future operations? And I asked uh, Mr. Nelson about that, and in his letter, he says the structure will not impact any currently known future operations. So he said, as far as they know in the future, we, we're good. So I wanted to make sure we were addressing that as well. Yeah. So I hope uh, this way, when this gets to the comfort level you were looking for. Um, I wanted to hand these out just so you could see the color maps and the coverage to show why we need the coverage here. Let's see if you guys some of it is. Um, so the first page of 
this packet is the site plan, which is part of our application process, or part of our application. Uh, if you notice, the uh, Lakeland Highway uh, runs uh, northeast and southwest, and then you have uh, Knights Academy Road, which is Old State Road to the east, and Knights Academy Road to the west of Lakeland Highway. Uh, this area south of that intersection is all wooded, as you'll see in, in the next uh, photo two down from there. The square that you see on the property is our leased compound area. That's what we are leasing from the Weathertons, that 100 foot by 100 foot square. We're also leasing the access to Old State Road, which is that line heading northeast from the square. If you look on the next page, that's just an elevation diagram of the type of structure we're proposing. Uh, each of those uh, four apparatus on top are antennas for different carriers. So Verizon Wireless as the anchor tent would be on top. And then those other three are future antennas for whoever else, AT&T, T-Mobile, uh, Sprint, New Metro. The next picture, which is kind of dark, but the darkness uh, is, this is the site plan superimposed on an area map. The darkness is really a wooded area. So I wanted you to see how wooded this was. Uh, we will be clearing part of the square and part in the access. But other than that, we don't have lease rights to do anything on the rest of that property. So everything else will remain as is. And I show that to you to show that this site will be well screened from Lakeland Highway and from Old State Road. And then the pole being 95 feet tall is only going to be about 20 to 30 feet above the trees. Uh, the next page is topographic map. I show you to just reiterate what Jason had shown you earlier. That circle is a red circle is a two mile radius and there's no towers within two miles that we could have co-located on. So I wanted to show you that we actually you know, did our homework and looked for those. Uh, the next two are the coverage maps for Verizon Wireless. Uh, and I wanted to, again, show you this to see why Verizon needs the coverage here. The colors are what's important. Uh, the green is our best coverage. We also refer to that commonly as in-vehicle, I'm mean, sorry, in-building coverage. So in the green areas, you should be able to use your Verizon wireless, iPad, phone, laptop, computer, inside buildings like we're in now. Uh, each of these green areas that have these labels on this map are existing Verizon wireless sites. So you can see in and around those towers and sites, there's good coverage. As you get further from each site, the uh, radio signal dissipates and you get into the yellow areas, which is what we refer to as good coverage and also in vehicle coverage. So you might, would likely connect your Verizon phone in the car, but in the yellow areas, you're likely not going to connect inside a building, including the home. The red is where we get into the outdoor coverage, and that's where I uh, try and describe as you've got to go outside and raise your left leg and, and your right arm in order to get your call to connect. It's the red areas we're really trying to fix here and also to provide better in-building coverage. Uh, to the church and the surrounding residences uh, in this area. So the Moore Road label in the middle is our proposed site. If you turn to the next page, that's the exact same map with that one site turned on. Now the green is a pretty good green area in the middle. Obviously if we were able to build a 160 or even higher, the green would be larger. But this is the coverage that we can get with a 100 foot or 95 foot pole. So that's the coverage differences and why Verizon is needing it. Uh, this area has been a long uh, area a challenge for all the carriers. Uh, drop calls, I mean, obviously 911 operates on these networks as well. And, you know, when you're in the red and you see some of the yellow, God that somebody had an emergency in those areas, there wouldn't be any connectivity there. So this has long been an area that the carriers have strived to, to fix the coverage, and this is the best proposal we've got based on the, our conversations with the so uh, we think we provided to Jason and his staff uh, all the uh, requirements or documents that are required under the application. Um, there was some question about some uh, distances, how far are we from different uh, houses and so forth. Uh, the church, uh, Pleasant Way Baptist Church, is over 700 feet away from the pole. And the closest house is over 1,300 feet away from the pole. So we know those questions uh, may come up and we want to make sure that you have that information. Uh, 
The structure itself, again, it's a fairly innocuous use. If we're not required to light it, there's no light, there's no noise, there's no odor, there's no dust, there's no traffic. So it's pretty innocuous use once this thing gets built. Uh, with that, I think we have a positive recommendation from staff. And if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer. Question mark for Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here that's even wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward. Anyone else? Okay. Anyone else wish to speak in favor? Come forward. I'm going to leave a couple of these up here so they can Thank you, sir. Favor, so. Okay. Um, Bill Ryan, I'm the chief engineer at the Air Force Base. I apologize for being so hard to get more work today. Um, this is a similar situation to the area over by the Bell Park Base. Just to the east of the main gate, there, there's a tower there with multiple antennas on multiple services on Similar situation, a similar height. Um, we looked into uh, this, we got a teleconference uh, with, with the engineers. Um, this sounds like the best solution. I mean, most of the pine trees in that area are probably in five feet tall. So this is not that much taller as long as it's lit, and I do request it to be lit, and it be lit with a non-LED light, because the, the night vision goggles and pilot shoes, and you can't see those, it's kind of far. Uh, but I think uh, Moody is in favor of this. Uh, we, like uh, the folks in Lanier County and that part of uh, Lowndes County, have a lot of folks over there driving around and we'd like to have cell phone service. So it work out fine. Um, do you have any questions that we have here? Have you, you said that, that you would like it to be non-LED, is that what you're saying? Infidescent or, or something like that. Are you referring to a color or a type of light? Type of light. What is LED? A light of LED. Well, I understand that, but what difference does it make whether it's incandescent if it's going to be red? But the, the night vision goggles the pilots use uh, don't see LED very well. Really? Right. Just a follow-up question. Yes, Can you give us, is there a um, preference for color? We heard earlier from staff that a request was if it's going to be lit, to not use all white lights. Is that still? I, I don't. Uh, I I can look at that and find out. I'm going to look around or, or red usually. So that's probably what it is. The FAA speaks to that. So if we are required to light it, which we're fine with, the, the, F, the FAA will tell us here's what you light it with and how you light it. And if there is a, a what they call a dual lighting system that is white during the day and turns to red at night. So it doesn't shine as bright at night. I'm just uh, pointing out that the, the, the up and down white line is the new Venus assault strip out there from Grand Bay Range. That's the C-130 assault and it's we, we spent a lot of time studying that, but this was going to affect that line, and it appears that it will not. The real, the real effect is for the helicopters because they really don't follow a specific track. Um, that's the reason for the light. The height, as long as they know where it is, should be a uh, There are some fairly tall towers to the south and east of this area. And originally, we kind of hoped they would provide coverage, but apparently they don't. Uh, it's either this or some, some much more expensive, a little bit of type system. After discussing this with the pilots, Senior staff of the Air Force Base are happy to do this as proposed. So Verizon does not have a problem with the lighting that he was describing? No, sir, we do not. Okay. Any more questions for the presenters? Thank you, bud. Sure. At this time, I will ask is anyone here wishing to speak in denial of this request? Anyone here tonight wishing to speak in denial of this request, please come forward at this time. Please, ma'am. your name and address for the record, please, ma'am. I'm Sandra Blanchard. I live at 4441 Old State Road. 
I'm behind the church. And all I was worried about is not sitting on my front porch the rest of my life watching the light. But I understand there's millions of pilots and everybody needs to be safe. But I would rather it not have a light. And I'm just stating the fact because of me. And my son's across the street. And that's it. Do we have any questions for the center, Ms. Blanker? Have any questions for present? Thank you, Madam Coming forward. Commissioners, do we need to have any discussion amongst ourselves on this request? There be none. I will accept the motion of this request at this time. Mr. Chairman, I move we recommend approval to the uh, County Commission of the request with the condition that the tower be lighted in conjunction with Sandy Shepard by Moody Air Force Base and half a head. Okay, so we have a motion from Commissioner Folsom. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from multiple people from Commissioner Raker. Is it seconded? So at this time we have a motion with a second. Hey, Commissioner Palmetto, did you get the, the condition attached to that? Yes. Good deal. That being said, all in favor of this request, please see the raise your right hand. Ms. Carmel has 7-0 passes. Thank you, ma'am. 